guys, my name's Nibiri and it's time for another Synth Saturday. And for this episode, I made a new melody and we're gonna make a sound with that. But I'm gonna focus on making it as easy as possible so that even when you don't have experience with this, just follow along with what I'm doing and you should be able to create some good results. This is the melody I've made. And since I have some little slide notes, before I want to let you hear this, I'm gonna uh, put on the mono legato and put this up to 20. And what this does is it makes sure that it's only playing one note at a time instead of layering these notes over each other. That's the melody. And now I'm gonna pull it down a tiny bit to 153. And, um, yeah, let's just get cracking with the sound. Now this melody is a little bit too high. So uh, I generally like to stay in between five and six for my top leads. So that's what we're gonna do. Now first step that we're gonna do is we're just gonna choose a waveform that we like. And I was playing around a tiny bit already. So I'm gonna start off with a trisol. It's just a nice in between pull up this a tiny bit so that we don't hear clicks at the end of each note and now we're going to do a band pass so whatever waveform you choose just do that then add a band pass now you notice that every high is gone then you just pull up the distortion put a clip on it and open it all the way don't think about that too much and you'll notice that the highs are back and the lead actually is going to sound a little bit stronger already Now the only thing you want to do is you want to play a little bit with the cutoff so it sounds nice and balanced. And um, yeah, mainly I just pull it down a tiny bit. Or what you can do is you can pull up the key track and just pull this down almost all the way and play around a little bit over here. So if you don't use key track, kind of put it in this section most of the time. Do you use key track? Then you just pull that up and you're gonna play with this kind of amount of space. Now when you feel you have a good point for that cutoff, then you take the resonance and just move it up a tiny bit. Some leads, when I make them, they don't have resonance, but just see if it sounds a little bit better. And what this resonance does, it's basically taking, uh, let me show you, that we have this band pass on the filter and the resonance is basically just adding this spike on top. So as you hear this sound as well, without the resonance, the filter sounds a little bit weaker and the lead sounds a little bit weaker, but with some resonance, you actually hear that it's peaking up a tiny bit more. And now we already got this nice and pure tone. Um, for this lead, I want to add a second uh, waveform. So let's just choose a sol and put it up to one as well. And I just wanna play around a little bit with the phase. I'm just gonna listen to this and I'm gonna scroll through this phasing thing and see where I like the sound the most. And uh, when I found that position, I'm just gonna keep it on there. Do you hear how you can really create some new sounds, but also you can take away half of the sound, like over here? It feels like the half of the waveform is just gone. So I won't choose that position. I like it somewhere over here, so... Um I think this position works. And just adding this second waveform, it takes it from just this pure, pure tone to a little bit more layered, just a little bit more interesting sound to listen to. 
say you don't like the second uh, waveform on there, or you're just starting out and you're not sure how to add these second waveforms, then don't do that. Now we're kind of at the same stage right now. We still have a solid sound and that sound sounds clear. When you have that solid sound, being it with one oscillator or two oscillators, I open up over here a pitch envelope and I'm pulling this down a tiny bit and pulling this up a tiny bit. And what this does is just creating a pitch envelope at the start of each note. And it's a slight change, but it's nice to listen to actually. It makes your leads a little bit more interesting. Now when we've done that, we're just gonna put an LFO on there, maybe one or two, and uh, make it a little bit more aggressive sounding. Because right now we still have this um, yeah, nice and happy tone, but of course it's hardstyle, so we kind of want to make it a little bit more beefy, a little bit more aggressive. So I'm choosing any kind of uh, waveform over here, and I pull up the rate and pull up the gain a tiny bit. Now we created some tiny movement in the pitch. If you can't really hear this, just pull up this a lot more and you already hear what it's doing. And now it stays in control. And I like to add um, two LFOs. So we're gonna add another one on here and make this a tiny bit more audible. So maybe something like this. And this second LFO, it just takes it from this, which still sounds really, really friendly, to a little bit more gritty. And that's how I make my top lead. Now we're gonna put this in a mixer channel. Just put it in there, take a low cut, and just cut away what you don't need. And with cutting away what you don't need, I don't mean that you're gonna cut off all these tiny little bits. That's just not interesting when you're making a sound. So just save that kind of time for making some quality sounds in your plugins. And now for um, mix down sake, I'm just gonna pull this down a tiny bit so we have some space for the other uh, layers that we're gonna add. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna uh, take another silent one and pull it on there again. And whenever you're making a melody with slide notes, for me personally, I always try to copy the uh, mono legato um, selection that we had over here. So it's 21, uh, 757 on the uh, portamento. So that's what I'm gonna do as well over here. So that it at least uh, fits each other. And we're gonna put this in its own mixer channel already. And we're gonna make a new sound for this. And I like to back up my uh, top leads with some good uh, hypersols. I always have one lower hypersol and one higher hypersol. And the lower hypersol is a little bit detuned and the higher uh, hypersol, it just depends on the top lead. So um, let's just get eight voices going over here and start detuning this. As a starting point, it's okay to not detune this too much. You just take the second oscillator and then crank up that detune a lot more. And now, if you're not experienced with this, just try to listen for when it really sounds off. Because if I do it like this, this is gonna sound off for sure. 
it just sounds bad. Uh, so yeah, just try to find that balance between where it gets too ugly and where it's just right. In my opinion, this is a little bit too friendly. So I pull this up a tiny bit more. And this is too ugly again. And this is just perfect. Now we're gonna uh, put a low pass on this, open this up, and we're gonna put this to 12. And if you're not sure what that uh, low cut does, or low pass does when you put it to 12, uh, it's just the uh, difference in between this curve and this curve. So it gives a little bit more space to the uh, highs. Um, so let's open a second uh, part on this silent. I'm just gonna put this up to six, six to eight voices. And now we have this kind of detuned layer over here. And then we're gonna bring back a little bit of the balanced uh, amount of detune. So a little bit less than the detuned version was. And now we have a solid um, mid body for this hypersol. And then to not make it too uh, cloudy, I'm just gonna open up another uh, oscillator and we're gonna pull this one octave up so it plays higher and gives some more air and room to breathe for this hypersol. And then we're just gonna copy uh, what we did over here. So we're gonna put this to a low pass, 12. And what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna play a little bit with that drive. And what this drive does is just uh, lifting up the gain of the uh, filter. Again, to show you what it does, it's basically just um, pulling up the entire filter. That's what the uh, drive is doing. Only then we're doing it with, uh, where is it, a high cut, and it's boosting up this section. So kind of making this happen. And what that does effectively in uh, silent one is it just uh, makes part A a little bit louder, makes part B a little bit louder, and you kind of try to balance that. Because if I pull this up all the way, you'll hear this higher hypersol a lot more. And it's actually gonna start clipping inside of silent, and we don't want that. Now we've done this and it's almost all finished. We're just gonna uh, pull up the resonance a tiny bit. It gives a little bit of highs in uh, the high end of the uh, hypersol lead. And it makes sure that you can easily get more uh, clear highs for your leads. And we're just gonna add kind of the same uh, pitch envelope on here. And then we're gonna add one um, LFO on here to really create a little bit more of a moving sound because it's still a good hypersol, but it's really static and we don't want that. Again, over here, I was just looking for the balance where um, the leads are getting too moved by that LFO or when it sounds right. And now you can really hear that LFO, but it's not really destroying the pitch of each note. So we're gonna low cut this again and we're just gonna cut away what we don't need. And that should be all you need. And now we're gonna check if these two uh, sound together nicely. And if you've done this correctly, it will probably sound right and it's gonna support your top lead quite well.
and it's actually working. So now we're going to add another silent. And like I said, we're going to do a higher hypersol layer. And just pull this up a tiny bit, and this one as well, so it doesn't click. And get the melody in there. Put the same settings on this mono legato again, so 21.757. So it's globally the same. Let's just pull up eight voices again. And for this higher hypersol, I'm gonna use two uh, oscillators, each time the second oscillator on the parts to create a higher uh, hypersol layer with this. And because we already have this quite detuned layer, you don't need to be too detuned on the uh, zero octave uh, oscillators on here because we already have this uh, quite beefy quite detuned uh, layer over here it's just going to make it more muddy and we don't want that and over here I'm getting a little bit dirty with this uh, higher hypersol but we're gonna uh, balance that out with the other higher layer so this is a good start for now, putting a low pass on this and just opening this up to uh, keep working. Do you also notice how when I pull up this uh, extra oscillator, it's just balancing out that dirtiness from that higher oscillator. Right now, without that one, it sounds really nasty. It's just a little bit off, and now when we pull this up and detune it to the right amount, it's actually helping it out a little bit. It just sounds more uniform again. And then we're gonna pull this up, put it to eight voices, and uh, yeah, let's just find the right balance. And this works. Now we're going to low pass this, put it to 12 again, put you to 12 and pull up the drive a tiny bit. That's right. Now put on a pitch envelope. The pitch envelope is a basic thing you can just copy for every, la every layer that you're doing in your uh, lead. Only thing is when your top lead is having the pitch envelope on the positive side, just make sure that everything's pitching a little bit on that positive side instead of the negative side. Um, so yeah. Now we're gonna put up an LFO on this. And I really just like uh, sine waves on hypersols, so I'm just gonna do that. And now we're gonna put this to a mixer channel. And again, just low cut this. And boost some of the highs. Again, it's not too much that I'm boosting, so I'm not going like three decibels plus most of the time at least. I'm just trying to stay around at one to two decibels. Now we're gonna pull on the other uh, sounds that we've made, pull them down and just balance them out a little bit. And when we uh, mix this down, we're um, gonna put the top lead quite in front, so we really hear that, and then we're just gonna back them up with the extra layers. So this one's just giving some extra movement and more body in the mids. And this one's just really gonna add some highs and air to this synth.
And I recommend not really looking too much at the screen when you're starting out doing this, just because if you look too much at the screen, you're gonna look at, oh, this looks too loud, this looks too quiet, and that's not how it works. You do really need to use your ears for that. And now a little extra layer I want to try, maybe it's not gonna work, but I want to try it, is um, making a simple second type of top lead that's a little bit more uh, in the background and that's just supporting this um, top lead that we have over here. So it's gonna be a kind of supporting top lead layer. So we're gonna put the melody on here, copy the mono legato again, and I'm thinking of maybe using a square or um, maybe distorting a uh, saw wave so much that it becomes a square. I think I'm gonna use this. And again, like I said, if you're not gonna use key track, just try to find the right spot over here, and that's it. And always we finish off our leads with just this extra touch of the pitch envelope. It's really not that hard to create a more moving uh, lead. And over here, just finish it off with something in the LFO. And now as I want to stay, keep this a little bit on the uh, background, I'm just not going to go too wild with the LFOs because that's going to make it more aggressive and maybe even clashing with our uh, main top lead. So we're going to put this in here. Again, just cut off the stuff that it doesn't need. And boost some highs. Now we're going to try to make uh, the top lead and the back lead um, work together. And after that, we're going to uh, mix in these hypersaws. So I'm just going to do the same thing all over again, just to make sure that we really have that best uh, balance for our lead layers. And what you're hearing right now is two leads not working together because they're a little bit off in facing and that is because uh, we're only using a saw over here and over here the saws that we've been using have been phased a little bit so uh, this saw layer is just uh, yeah ruining the other lead so uh, let's see if we can make this work by um, moving the face of this saw or maybe choosing for the square option that i had in mind Nah, this doesn't sound nice. Right now, if you want to put that second layer under there, it's just needing to support it. It's not... This is really just destroying the sound. So we're not going to keep this. We're going to pull the face down. And now I'm going to try with the pulse. I'm just checking if everything sounds right enough. Yes, and now let's put on that top lead again. Now this balance works. Um, Whenever you're trying to make this extra uh, top lead layer fit with your main top lead layer, um, again, just put up that top lead really much in front. Because when you want to uh, make sure that you're really adding something to the sound, just mute it and listen back to it with it on. And you're just really gonna notice that it's actually putting so much more into the sound. So without it, we just have this blank top lead. And with it, Do you see how much that just adds? Even when we have this volume on 
almost a half of this. So it's fine, just try to pull this volume down a little bit and make sure that the top lead is still the main character of this lead. Now we're gonna pull up this. If the oscillators were, oh, if science working. Again, this just gives some more movement in stereo. And this is how I will do my top leads. Now we're gonna route this to one bus. And we're just gonna EQ this a tiny bit. And mainly thing, the thing that you're doing with EQing is just boosting a little bit of the highs. Don't do anything too weird over here. And I like to use uh, OTT on here as well. So we're just gonna pull up on this depth a little bit, pull it down and uh, just boost the mids a little bit and boost the highs a tiny bit. So all we've done right now is just boost a little bit of the highs. I boost a little bit of the mids in the OTT because I like just how this sounds. And um, yeah, this is it for the top leads actually. We can even put some reverb on here to really admire it when it's uh, with reverb, because reverb just makes everything a lot more beautiful. I really like that. Um, yeah, let's just add some chords under here. Now I like to keep the uh, top melody and the chords just separated uh, per pattern. And uh, yeah, let's just work on a sound over here. And maybe we're gonna use uh, Serum first for this. So let's add another layer, Serum, pull the chords in there, and start with a Serum layer for chords first. So if you really want some easy hypersol chords, just pull this up to 16, detune this, pull down the blend a little bit, so it's kind of around the same a uh, line for all these green and yellow lines. Then pull up the other one, pull it to 16, do the same thing globally. Don't put the detune on the same settings and just make it sound right. Then we're adding a little filter. Just as in silent, we're just going to pull the 12 up, pull up the drive a tiny bit, pull up the resonance a tiny bit, and uh, that's it. And if you're hearing this, you're probably thinking this doesn't sound too good. Well, it's just the same as with this um, second of the first hypersol layer that we added. It's just going to be there to have some body, and it's the same with this layer. It's just going to be there to have some body pull on uh, some chords in the uh, midsection and then we're going to add some higher parts with uh, silent. So we're just going to cut off away what we don't need as well. And of course we want to check if this sounds right with the rest of the layers on. Now it does sound good, but we still have a little amount of gaps over here that aren't in the chords. 
So uh, yeah, let's just make sure that we copy them correctly. Because we want, I want to have my chords following the melody as it uh, is playing. Now the only thing I want to add for this chords that's going to change a little bit from the uh, top lead is we have these little fast notes over here. We're just going to cut them down a tiny bit so we kind of have a little bit more poppy chords on these uh, fast notes. That's awesome. Um, yeah, we're just gonna add one higher chord layer in here and then we're gonna add one uh, with a little bit more uh, body. And that's it. So uh, let's open up Silent for this one. And the benefit of just using Silent is, of course, we can spread out these uh, octaves on these oscillators. So you can really create this really nice and broad uh, hypersol layer. And that's just what we're aiming for. We're gonna uh, spread out the octaves quite nicely just with some zeros and ones. And then we're just gonna low pass this, pull it to 12. So it's really some stuff is really just the same. Pull on this pitch envelope again. And just make this move a little bit with LFO. And now we're gonna uh, take away what we don't need anymore. And play this with the other um, hypersol layer first. And balance this out a tiny bit. So this second one from Serum is just there to really, um, uh, yeah, just put some body in this higher hypersol. But this one's just gonna stand out some more, just as the top lead is standing out some more over the rest. Now we're gonna add another silent layer. And over here, we're just gonna add the root notes from the uh, chords as well. So over here, we're uh, playing, it's a G, then this is a D. Uh, let's put it down here. Then we're playing an E, yes. And from here, it's going, it's going to C. When we don't put too much voices on this layer, it's just gonna give some more warmth and some more body from these uh, notes that are an octave lower. So I'll show you. Just pull up the polyphony a little bit more. Uh, so it plays every note. And we're not gonna do too much with the uh, detune over here, just because we want to have a really clean midsection. I think this is actually enough. And maybe add one more si um, one more saw wave. And after that, we're gonna add one different type of wave and that's it. So this sounds nice and warm. Pull on the low pass, 
we'll open it up and pull the drive a tiny bit. And now we're gonna maybe do, maybe a square, maybe a trisol, something to just break it up a little bit. I think I actually like this for a change. Um, yeah, just make the same stuff with the env envelopes. It's really a thing you probably noticing by now is like whenever you're uh, choosing to go a certain way with like pitch envelopes, for example, just make sure to copy that in almost every layer. And um, yeah, just the same with LFOs, just add them everywhere, just to add some tiny sprinkles when you have a good solid sound. That's what I'm aiming for first of all, just have a good solid sound coming out of silent. And then we're gonna play with this uh, envelope and with the uh, uh, LFO. Now we're gonna put this in Pro Q, and as you'll notice, it's playing a little bit more lower. Now we're still gonna low cut this to balance it out a little bit, but nothing too special. And now I'm gonna pull you down. And because it's carrying the most amount of yeah, low mids, um, we don't really want to pull this up too much. Then it's just gonna overpower all the other layers and we don't want that. So we're just gonna pull it in the back and uh, yeah, just have it support the rest of your chord layers. And yeah, if you're just, again, doubting if it's loud enough or if it's really adding something, just take it away and really notice how much warmth this extra layer gives. It just gives so much more body and it's just a tiny sound. Um, yeah, now to really finish this main sound design part up, I'm just gonna pull down all the volumes again, just because I want to be as sure as I can that everything's balanced. And aside of that, when you're still learning, I actually recommend this so you can, when making one lead, you can, you can practice putting the gains up in the right order like five times when making a lead. It might sound like a little bit of extra work, but it's actually learn a lot faster and um, yeah, the more practice you put in, it's gonna help you later on. I'm still feeling something here sounds off. Um, maybe with the chords. Ah yeah, over here. This one's a little bit too short. Now this is sounding nice and uh, quite full actually already. But um, one thing we're probably gonna notice is when we're putting the uh, 
real work in the reverb and stuff, the uh, highs of the chords aren't full enough. So let's just first um, mix this down, put some reverb on here, and um, yeah, then I'll just show you how you can make this lead sound even bigger. It's just thing that it's just a thing that I noticed uh, lately when I was making my tracks. Like five, six la layers sound good, but maybe when you add an extra layer, it's just gonna sound even better. So it's not about just adding eight hypersol layers, but it can help you out. Uh, let's first just uh, put these chords into one bus. See if we need to adjust a little bit something on here. Okay, that's good. And um, now just put this to one bus again. So maybe this one. And now we can put this on our reverbs. So let's open up the uh, first reverb. And the first reverb is just gonna be there to fill the spaces in between the notes. So um, we're gonna pull down the threshold quite hard actually, and pull up the, knee, pull up the knee a little bit. And now we're just gonna play around with this uh, release. And with the release, we're just gonna try to make it pop up in the right moment. Now this is sounding nice, but um, I think we can put a little bit more reverb in here. So we're just gonna go into our uh, compressor and put on the output gain of the uh, compressor. And it's okay that you really hear this kick up. It's just, um, yeah, it's okay that it's really pushing in front uh, of these gaps, but just don't make it too loud. Uh, now the thing that we're gonna do is gonna add a second uh, reverb layer. And this reverb layer is just there to swell in the background and just make the whole lead sound huge. So this is how I would go about putting a uh, reverb on my leads. And yeah, it's okay to just drown them in reverb. It's just what we do in hardstyle. So um, yeah, now I just noticed that the stop lead was a little bit too quiet. So I adjusted that and a little bit of the hypersols could be a little bit louder as well. But I still feel like it doesn't have the power in the chords. Like I said, that's something I noticed in my tracks lately. So whenever I'm done with the uh, main sound design, I just like to add maybe another serum, maybe another silent. Let's just choose serum for this instance. And we're gonna focus on getting a little bit more of a bigger high hypersol uh, chord sound. So might sound difficult, but it's not too difficult actually. Just crank this up to 16 again. Don't think too much about it. And um, yeah, put on the detune. And now we're gonna see if we can actually make this give some more power to our highs in that chord. Oh, and if we want to LFO uh, the fine tune or the pitch like we did in uh, silent, but do that in Serum. You can just put an LFO over here, put it to the fine tune. Make it come down a little bit because you don't want 100%. So 
So let's say 28. I normally range from 20 to 40 ish. And let's just take a sine wave just by going through this map, basic and sine. And now it's really slow. So you take off the BPM and you're gonna move up the Hertz. So it's uh, moving a little bit faster. Or something else you can try with chords as well is adding a noise layer, making sure it doesn't have any output and just take one of the, um, the more outstanding oscillators and give it a frequency modulation from that noise. As you hear, it can be quite aggressive, but just put it up in the right amount and you can actually create some more spicy sounds in this uh, one chord layer. And now we're going to put this uh, behind everything. So this one's going to be acute in the same way. And we're going to put up everything else. And um, yeah, just mix it in a little bit. And of course, we're gonna put some uh, reverb on here. Um, and there's multiple ways to go about this. You can just put it on here and make it have some uh, of that sand reverb, or you can try, and there's really no rule in this, just put a viola room on here and make it like 25%-ish, pull up the uh, pre-delay a little bit and pull on the decay as well. So it's actually creating um, a big hypersol inside of the mixer channel. And this is how I will do my sound design. The only thing that we can do uh, to make it a little bit more funky is adding a delay. And I'm just gonna put that delay on the top lead. And um, yeah, just make it have a little bit more drive and that's it. So uh, just put some delay on here. And let's see how it sounds without the chords first. So we have the right drive. Like that, and yeah, just put the chords behind there. And for the leads, we're actually done right now. Now, this was it for today. I hope you liked it, and I hope you learned something from this. And hopefully, I'll see you back soon again. Thank you for watching. Cheers. <laughs>